So, for our first ever race, bloody hell, I'm starting up towards the front with the Tamo. We are at the road. Oh, we bogged down a little bit. I'm going to get run over by a buggy if I'm not careful. I mean, it could probably climb over us if it's so wanted. Oh, that was a lot of straight. I mean, we kind of got juddered through that first corner in a peculiar manner. Somehow, we actually did relatively well in all of that. Um... Regardless, the buggy shot off with all of its acceleration. is always likely to do that. In C-Class, you will probably be a little bit compromised somewhere. Uh, for me, well, we're straight line speed. We aren't very fast down these straights. We are pretty good, hopefully, at both under braking and through these corners. Interesting into... I'm also expecting this car to rev a lot higher than it is. Uh, <laughs> that it does, it does not. So we'll have to change up a little bit... A little bit earlier. Oh, we are trying to make up time here through the corners of a Loster. It is looking pretty racy behind us. We will cover the inside best we can there. If they're going to try along, if they're going to try around the outside, they can go for it, but they, well, not close enough. Not quite got the grip to pull that one off. We are going to kind of consolidate a fourth a little bit, run away from the rest of the pack. The buggy might actually be a bit of a pain here. Oh, it turned in a smidge too late. Uh, the buggy might be a little bit of a pain because that is going to slow everyone up through these corners. It's going to stack the entire pack up, and then we're going to come to this. Well, the, the main, the main straight. I mean, around here, it will struggle. It'll struggle. It'll back up. It'll back up the other Tamo. It'll back up the Nissan. Uh, I mean, I'm not actually too. I've got that car a little bit wonky, so we're a little wide. Oh, the buggy got a big wiggle. I think they had a wheel on the grass. I'm going to break a touch earlier now. In a normal racing lap, I'd be later on the brakes there, but I just wasn't quite sure where everyone was going to pan out in all of that. And this is where we have the issue. We get held up by the buggy, and then we don't really hold the buggy up. When it gets to the straights, of course, it will bugger off into the distance. The IDX is not so quick. <laughs> Down here, uh, we will draw alongside. I mean, I kind of, when I'm building this car, I tried to make it to give me some hope of acceleration, some hope of straight line speed, which means that we're on the standard tyres, only slightly larger uh, rear tyre widths. Uh, the rest of the PI, it starts off as a high D-class car, so I don't have too much PI, but the rest of the PI was just fill it full of power parts and try and uh, yeah, try and get some decent speed out of the car. The buggy's up on two wheels, I didn't touch it, it went round on its own. I <laughs> had nothing to do with that, it's currently a uh, Tamo 1-2, the Veloster's having a look. The, the Veloster's very quick in places. It's not quite not quite ever got into a, the right position to affect a pass, but I think it might only be a matter of time until it finds the right place. And I should probably be a touch careful right around the outside of the leader. It's a difficult place to make it. It can be done, of course, and if you do make it, you'll be the inside for this next corner. We've got the straight line speed. Can't get the move done down there. They're out very wide. And that's going to make you slow off the corner. However, they are still going to lead into this long final turn. I have a horrible feeling we might get the Tamo. I think we've got the speed here. And I think we're both going to be had by the Ute when we go <laughs> come down that straight. Someone has at least cleared the signpost out of the way. I'm carrying a lot of speed into turn one. Nowhere to really go with it, though. We are trying. I think we're in trouble now from that Ute. We are not at a safe distance. The only hope I have is that we can A, outbreak it, and B, we're going to be going maybe too wide. It might be too wide between me and the red Tamo. We're going to try and use the, uh, uh, or it's just going to breeze past both of us in one go. We might make it three wide. It's a big dive down here. We are up the inside of the Tamo. I couldn't get the Ute. The Ford is through. That's a brilliant pass. <laughs> it's a brilliant pass with the Ford. Brilliant positioning. He had the car exactly where he wanted it, exactly where he needed it to be. Now I think I'm in, I'm in trouble. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. All of that work. All of that work. And now we are in. Because I can pressure and pressure and pressure and I can get alongside. I could even get past it. But ultimately, we'll get to that straight and we will be done for. My best bet, we've got to kind of compromise the U if we can. Force him to take a tighter line through here. Slow him down. We're trying to cut back, but we're still going to be stuck on the outside. We will probably have the grip to sneak around the outside if we wanted to down here. And then we'll be on the inside for the final turn. 
This is a final lap. The Hyundai's caught right back up as well in our little in our little fight. Will the Ute leave a gap for me to shove the Tamo into? Not quite. Oh, he's had to check up mid corner. He will leave a gap, but it won't matter too much. We'll be on <laughs> we'll be on the wrong side. Veloster's getting to the inside now. Veloster's gonna get boxed in though by the Ute. This might help me in terms of dealing with the Ute. I can't stop it for the second part of that turn one chicane. There's a Tamo alongside. <laughs> Mad finish. There's an RX-8 coming to join in the fun. We're going to have Veloster. I don't think I can get the Ute. That was kind of our only real chance was to keep it behind through the twisty section. But even if we did, it was just always going to fly past. Here comes that Veloster. It's going to get back past us. Uh, I would be careful about closing down too much on that. He is still on the outside. No, he didn't quite keep it there. Oh, it's been a frantic end to this race. It has been a frantic end to this race. We've still got the rest of this lap to go. Can I fend off? Oh, it would help if I didn't put a wheel on the grass. Can I fend off from that Veloster? That's, I've just slowed up everybody now. We're <laughs> we are making quite the train right here. We are making quite the train. The Ute is going to get it without a big mistake. I mean, we will catch a little bit through these next couple of corners. We will have the better car here for this part of the circuit, but we're way too far back to challenge. Too many battlings between us. I think the Veloster thought about having a look up the inside. I've actually run in a little bit too deep. Everybody's running a bit too deep through there. I was giving him space as I wasn't sure if he'd shoved the nose up at the final part of that corner. It's now all about who can carry the speed, who will get it right around this long final turn. It is going to be a victory for Ninetales' is Ute. I will claim second. It looks like the RX-8 is going to get third in the end of all of that. Oh. <laughs> that was a mad final lap. That was an absolutely bonkers final lap. So we are back to a more usual grid spot for this second race. We have come to the Road Atlanta short circuit. I don't know what it's going to be like for my Tamo. Oh, we've got big lag. I think someone might have got held on the grid. Oh, <laughs> you're never quite sure if someone's got either stalled it off the line or someone's got their car stuck in, a lo stuck in the lobby screen trying to, uh, to get going. And that can cause mayhem on the start line. One car not moving. Uh, most vehicles made it through. One, unfortunately, not so much. Are we going to go around the outside at the top of the hill? We've got the grip to do that. We will clear an RX-8 as well. And there we go. We are up into... It's not a bad start for us. We're up into a top 10 position. MX-5 will fall next to us. Uh, we will get that mode completed. BMW... I'm actually very surprised to see that in C-Class. Uh, <laughs> however it is, probably doesn't have much in the way of options that you can do with it, but there we go. It will probably be a bit faster than us down the straights, that's okay. Jesus, the Vauxhall is very quick. You know what, the Vauxhall can try it. Uh, don't know what it's going to be like in terms of handling. Uh, we're stuck with nowhere to go with this BMW, annoyingly. Oh, let's try and not run the Vauxhall out of road. Uh, the BMW is on the grass, and that will be a position for me. Uh, we are towards this final corner. We should be able to nail that flat out. Uh, leader long gone at this stage. I think third is... Uh, third we can see. Uh, first and second are very, very long gone further up this this field. Course is up to fourth. We actually got some wheel spin and a bit of a slide off of the kerb. Second gear is what I want out of there. That's okay. Right, overtakes. Where are we going to get them? Where are we going to get some passes done? IDX is wanting to find a way past the Clio. We pulled clear of the limo. I think that's going to have a tough time. The limo's cleared the MX-5, but I think the limo's not going to enjoy life around this circuit too much. The IDX might leave the door open for me here. Don't know where the course has gone. The Vauxhall's lagged its way maybe out of the lobby. Uh, can we get to the inside at the top of the hill? Oh, there's a little bit of a rub between the pair of us. Nothing too bad with that. The I think, yeah, I think the Vauxhall's gone. Uh, we're still side by side. I was trying to get out of that. Don't want to fight down there. <laughs> okay, then that's brought the limo back into it. Bugger. It's all gone wrong. Oh, that IDX is going to escape. I really could have done with being able to uh, follow the Nissan through all of that. We've got such, we get such a good driver for that corner. We'll pass the Clio miles before we even get to the turn. Uh, <laughs> as we head through the final quarters, the IDX is fighting... Oh, it's a Veloster, sorry. 
up there. IDX is fighting the Veloster with one more turn to go. Unless someone's binned it in a tyre bundle, we will not be catching up to any of those. We won't. Veloster will hold on to the podium. Fifth, though, is a solid, a solid position. I can't complain uh, too much about that. It was a limo. <laughs> Do you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Well driven. A limo would take victory. My fastest lap wasn't too shabby, though. RX-8 in second uh, with the fastest lap of the race, I would imagine. Uh, then the Veloster, the IDX, a couple of tenths faster than me. I was a couple of tenths. The limos were working bloody well around here, apparently. First and sixth for the limos. My Tamo buddies uh, down in ninth for the next of the, the Tamos, the Illumicraft, uh, getting into the top ten. And I am pleased to report that uh, the Tamo is good. We are chasing down, well, some big cars. There is an Escalade, a Volvo, and a Hyundai. And Hyundai getting tagged by the by the Volvo. I don't know if I definitely don't want to try and make it three wide. I'm happy to just deal all as a tank snapper going on from the Escalade. I'm so happy to just deal with the Volvo. That the Volvo even was aware of how much speed I suddenly had on the outside of that corner. The Hyundai does seem to be struggling a little bit for if, a, if an Escalade is uh, putting you under pressure. You know, you're probably struggling a little bit for pace and I've got nowhere to really go. I would not try and drive into that wedge. That wedge is not going to uh, to last long around there. Now, this is where, of course, things are going to hurt for us. We are not going to be as fast. Although we have now got the good news, of course, is we have got an Escalade punching a hole through the air and the Escalade punches a very big hole through the air. So that will hopefully drag us along a little bit. Uh, the downside is, of course, visibility is pretty poor back here. That Escalade is not stopping. Uh, <laughs> I was a little concerned when the Escalade was using the same braking points as I would be, and I'm in a very small, lightweight track car. Uh, oh, that's going to go wrong for me. I'm going to get past. Uh, that's going to get a much better run up here. That will, uh, yeah, you can have that. I will just have a little bit of a lift. Uh, and... <laughs> We will hopefully fight back later on, but at that particular moment in time, there was no way we were going to make that, uh, make that well, fight to work. The Abarth will go a little defensive, doesn't want me trying to sneak immediately back up the inside. To be fair, I am fairly happy to sit and follow the Abarth if it's got the pace. If it's got the pace to go chase after the Hyundai and then the pack ahead, don't have a problem. They fight too wide, that helps me. Uh, yep, I know he's actually going to get across ahead. It's a uh, aggressive defensive manoeuvre, but a fair one. He was clear ahead to, to do it. The Abarth's going to go the long way around turn one. I might get involved here and screw things up for the Abarth, or the Abarth might leave the door open for me. I will try and follow it through. However, the Hyundai is going to get us on the run up the hill. Okay, the problem is now is if we get stuck back here for too long, we're going to go around the outside of the Hyundai. This is scary stuff. He's given us space. I, <laughs> I appreciate being given the space there. That's a sketchy... Well, I say it's a sketchy move. It can come off if you get it right and if you are given enough space to get it right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was from the Abarth opened the door. The Abarth getting that pass slowed the, uh, slowed the Hyundai. Just put the Hyundai that smidge wide. Uh, on the oh, they're exactly the same thing again. There, trying to carry too much speed. Yeah, with the with the Hyundai just a smidge wide, open the door. I had my opportunity. We took it. We had to fight, and we really, really had to work for that one. But we did get it. Annoyingly, I'm not going to have the time to do this. I don't think. I'm trying my best to keep up with that Abarth, and it's just not quite working. The Dart is not slowing down the Tamo enough at the front of this group. The Abarth is in the weeds for the second time in as many laps. We're going to go side by side through here. <laughs> I've done way more side by side stuff through that back chicane than I really should have done. The Alpha was very, very early on the brakes there. Uh, that scared everybody. Oh, everyone's got connected. It's all got a little bit wrong. I'm very sorry to the to the Abarth there. The Alpha oh, got a little bit, a uh, little bit early on the brakes and just causes chaos when you've already got cars committed to. I mean, I was already committed on the outside of the Abarth down there. Just no one has anywhere to go. Uh, we're going to try and squeak our way around the outside of the Alpha. Yep, I am still there. I'm still there. Uh, we will get the move done. We will give you space through the second part of that. And the Abarth's going to get the best run here. The Abarth might well get both of us. And the Abarth is going to get the pair of us. I, I mean, I will have a slightly better run, but the Abarth is the slightly better car. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so close. I think I got it in the end. <laughs> 
That was an incredible finish. That was an incredible finish. I didn't get it in the end. Bloody hell, well done, Impego, without a bar. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> the Amarth was the faster accelerating car, got himself to the inside, but takes a very tight line, and you lose that little bit of momentum coming off of the corner. And I kind of, I tried my best to use what I had, just didn't quite have it. If the start line had been a few centimetres the other way, that would have helped. Uh, the dart holds on to a podium. It was an MX-5 followed by an RX-8 up at the front. So, for our final race, we find ourselves towards the front, and we have come to one of my favourite lower-class uh, racetracks of them all, the Hockenheim Short Circuit. The Escalade is buggered off, the buggy is going to come flying past, but otherwise a pretty good start, actually, for the Tamo. We will sweep past the buggy when you take such a tight line into that turn one. You do end up uh, struggling to take speed off. Uh, sort of the exit of the corner. Oh, the Escalade's on two wheels! This is going to be fun! Uh, <laughs> sure, let's get past a slightly scary two-wheeling Escalade, because when they are going up on two wheels, they're going to struggle to put power down for the next corner. It also well, terrifies the crap out of you that when they're going to be unpredictable again... Uh, I should have tried actually to duck underneath that a bit better. Very difficult to see past an Escalade. They are very large. Very large indeed, we should be clear there. Now he will probably have the run down towards the hairpin. Let's make the tamo nice and wide. Don't let them cut back underneath. Although it'll be... <laughs> Again, that's just general racing tactics. It'll probably be difficult for the Escalade to manage that one. Because, well, it's a giant Escalade. The MX-5 I am a trifle worried about. Uh, that was the winner from the previous round. And looks quick. Is it is. I, I can't make a mistake. I'll make a mistake. The MX-5 gets past. I think we've probably had it. Yeah, I don't think I've got an answer to the pace of the car, but I can make life very, very difficult for the Mazda. Are we going to need to defend down here? Probably. I'm going to park it in the middle of the road. Of course, as soon as you start having to defend, as soon as you start taking these defensive lines, that's slowing both of us down now. Once I'm having to hug that inside line, you know, I'm not taking the maximum amount of speed I can through that corner. And of course, the MX-5 can't take his preferred line through there because, well, there's a Tamo on the middle of it. Uh, he is going to try and get to the inside on the exit, but he's not going to get far enough alongside to make it stick. Turn two is where we've got to be wary. I think turn one, we are quick enough, accelerating. Master was a little late on the turn in. We've bobbled across the curb. He's bobbled across the curb as well. So yeah, this is where we've got to watch out. Make sure we get... Oh, my gosh, I got the brakes too early. I goofed that one up myself. I was going to say, make sure we get it stopped so we cover the inside. I did that part of the manoeuvre. I was just a tiny bit... That's the little mistake that could be costly. Although we are still on the inside for here. We are still on the inside line up here. The MX-5 wants to go that long way round. Has he got the speed to do it? Has he got the grip? No. He's had to yield in that. I mean... <laughs> I ran him very close to the edge of the road. I am now slow through these next corners. It is full. This is now full on defending. There is. This is a cling on for dear life. And I don't want to be doing that for another four laps. We have got a good run out of the hairpin. Keep the car in the middle of the road. Make the MX-5 go the long way around. This is my favourite overtaking spot on the circuit. You dive up the inside of the penultimate corner. That window pillar there is a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> Just can't see the apex to aim for. On that, uh, on that final corner. Okay, we have held off the MX-5 for a lap. At least like, that, was, that was a proper fend off the MX-5 for a lap. Although he has, he made a mistake across the kerb. He gave me a little bit of a nudge and he was across the kerb sliding the car around. That's given us the tiniest, tiniest bit of a breather. Uh, third place will be catching us probably quite quickly in all of this. That would be uh, the Abarth released from the traffic. I put a win on the grass. That is not great for me. The MX-5 is a little wide. Don't hit the concrete through there. That really will seal your fate. Uh, the MX-5's got another good run here. I'm going to have to cover that inside. Make it difficult. That's what we're doing here. Oh, I'm a little wide. I think I'm still going to hold it. Just the Masters trying desperately to get up underneath us. Just can't quite get the car there. Uh, we've got to... Uh, oh, 
see that one coming. That's a brilliant move for the MX-5. Yeah, although is he going to be slow on the exit? I think I'm going to be slower, though. That's a very, very good move from the MX-5. Yeah, I was trying to cover the inside. We covered the inside, but you're on wide on the exit. The cutback was good from the MX-5. Now what we've got to do is try and... Oh, uh, no, not do that. Could really done without doing that. So I have to try and pressure into a mistake. And running wide through there is not going to help my cause whatsoever. He's now got to go defensive, though. This is the plus point for me. Because while he might have a technically faster car overall, still got to go a little bit defensive in some of these corners. And that will then compromise his lines, which will then well, make it difficult for him to pull away. And we might be able to sneak this one back up the inside here. The Mazda's got a little bit more grip and he's going to try and make that one work. The long way round, he's going to have to fall back into line, but we'll get a better run. This is a fantastic battle. Uh, can't believe, can't believe it's still going. Can't believe it's still going. The MX-5 is on the outside. I got some oversteer on the curb. I think the Mazda's going to get us to the inside here. Yes, he is. I can't shut the door as much as I would like to. Ah, it's a good, good little bit of covering from the MX-5. He blocked off, well, the move that he did to me. I was trying to do back to him, but he did a very, very good job of covering that one off. And you can see how quickly Bath has caught us with those two laps. I fended off with everything I had. But we might now be in a spot of trouble. We're both... Oh, I say that. The MX-5 <laughs> in a bigger spot of trouble there. He would not have wanted... I mean, having just got to the lead, that is not what you want because he knows what happened last time around. Although, last time I was a smidge closer. It had to be a hell of a move. We need as much speed as we can from the Tamo here. I, yeah, I need to be closer if we're going to get the pass done here. Although, the MX-5 is not infallible. The MX-5 is not infallible around this circuit. We have seen little weaknesses, and it is having to defend here. Uh, we're trying to get to the inside. I might give it a little bit of a rub uh, <laughs> through all of that. A uh, little wide, little wide from there. Come on, come on. We've got to be really, really careful. The Abarth doesn't sneak past the pair of us, especially with some uh, back markers coming up. Now, hopefully, they will get out of the way, but especially when there's a group of them, if they are not paying attention, as they should be, uh, it might be a touch scary. I think the MX-5 has got me. I think we we had we had a chance, but we just couldn't get the, we couldn't get a pass a move completed. The MX-5 was just it was just just far enough away. And now I'm in the positions where I'm strong. I am too far back. Oh, the MX-5! I think trying to get out of the way. Uh, not the easiest of places for me to get a pass. <laughs> That's a little scary. We are through. But, uh, yeah, not the easiest of places for me to uh, to do that. Uh, we are giving a hurry-up bump on the way through there. Uh, where is that a bath? It is closing, although it is also in the in the traffic, shall we say. I imagine these cars may have had to take a trip to, through, the, uh, through the pit lane. The MX-5 is getting uh, held up slightly. I mean, it's put me there, but this is the section that the MX-5 is stronger on anyway. This is the bit where the MX-5 is the uh, stronger car. Volvo gets out of the way nicely through a very tricky corner. The Volvo has also let the Mini pass, but thank you. Thank you very much, Volvo, for uh, for, for letting us through. Oh, I'm going to get on that power too early, I think. There's a little bit of a wiggle from the Tamo. Am I going to be close enough? I mean, it's, it's all going to come down to if the MX-5 doesn't make a mistake through here, I don't think I can do it. Uh, I've got too much understeer as well. Well driven from the Mazda. That was a very, very good race. Uh, <laughs> I held on for as long as I could, and we put up a hell of a fight with the Tamo. Uh, but in the end, just not quite able. Just not quite able to fend it off. Uh, the Abarth was coming, and that Abarth was shifting towards the end of the race. I mean, look at the lap times between. Us, us top four were streaks ahead of the rest of the fields. That's quite impressive. I mean, the Abarth was a good half a second clear of of us. Okay, sure, me and the Mazda were fighting and everything, but ah, that was a good race. I enjoyed that one. Shame, you know, I couldn't hold on, but you, there's only that, that sort where you're under that much pressure. It's, it's only so long you can hold on. You just hope that you don't make that tiny, tiny mistake. It's all, it's, all it took. I just overdrove, overdrove the corner ever so slightly. Mazda found the gap. And, yeah, I tried. I threw everything back. Getting back past, couldn't quite do it.
That, though, is going to be it for this week's Versus the Community. I liked the Tamo. I think it was a pretty, a pretty solid choice of car. It worked at just about every track I went to. Might not quite have been the very fastest vehicle out there, but consistently towards the front. And had a lot of really good fun close racing with variety of different cars. The next Versus the Community, if you want to sign up and take part in that, uh, there will be a link to our forum in the description. Uh, you can find the Ferrari's Versus the Community section. Sign up in there. It's going to be on Thursday the 23rd of August. We are going to go racing with A-Class cars from the early sport touring division. Now we're using the cars from the division, but we are not using the class. I don't actually know what class they build them up to, but we're going to the top of A-Class. Should make for a very, very interesting uh, selection of vehicles. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.